All right, this is the last lecture in, or the last section of lecture three on ordinary least squares formulas that you need to be familiar with. And although this is somewhat optional, if you are taking a more mathematical class in econometrics, or if you are planning on going to graduate school, many good graduate schools that involve data analysis will expect you to know anywhere between some and most or all of the math behind doing a regression. And so this is a good place to start this um, delving into the, the math is trying to make sure you know where these formulas come from. And this is the simplest way I know how to, to do it. And we're just going to look at a simple regression. That's what we've been doing with these formulas because deriving the formulas for multiple regressions is very difficult and involves matrix algebra and I'm not assuming that you have that kind of preparation so if you want to understand basically where these formulas come from recall that the ordinary least squares the the least squares word means that we want to minimize the squared residuals or the sum of the squared residuals and so this is just a little handwritten derivation that I'm going to go through here. If we want to minimize the sum of the squared residuals, what's a residual? It's the difference between the actual and the predicted value. Where do we get the predicted value? Well, from our estimated equation, which is the estimated y-intercept, the estimated slope, times x. That gives us a prediction, a y-hat. So substitute that in for y hat. Now, I technically should have hats on these, but I'm a little sloppy in this derivation, so uh, please don't penalize me any points for that. How are we going to minimize? We're going to choose the y-intercept and the slope that minimize this function. Well, to minimize a function, you need to take a derivative and set the function equal to zero and you can either hope that it's a minimum or you can check. We're just going to hope that it's a minimum, but believe me, it will be a minimum. So we need to take two derivatives since we have two things that we are minimizing this equation with respect to, the slope and the y-intercept. So we take two derivatives, multiply by two, use the chain rule, some negative signs get in there, and we have these two derivatives set equal to zero. The first thing I'm going to do is work with this deri derivative, partial derivative with respect to b0, and just cancel the 2 by dividing both sides by 2, and then move the sum, or uh, kind of distribute the sum throughout the formula here. And um, so we have the sum of the yi's minus the sum of the y-intercept, the sum of the slope times the xi. In this next section, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to move the y-intercept over to the other side of the equation, and I'm going to move the slope outside the summation sign. We can do that because it's a constant. It's just um, a number, and so we can multiply it times the sum of the x's right here. It takes a while to get used to working with these summation kinds of uh, operators in algebra. Now, the next thing we're going to do after we move that over is recognize that if we take the y-intercept and we add it up itself plus itself plus itself, and we do that n times, we're going to end up with n times the y-intercept. And so after we realize that, we're just going to divide all that equation by n to get rid of the n. And so the n's cancel here. This part of the equation we're left with adding up the y's, dividing by n. That gives us the average y. Here we're adding up the x's, dividing by n. That gives us the average x. And so we, we see where this formula comes from for the y-intercept. Now, we need to plug this in to this other equation where we have the y-intercept. So plug it into the other derivative. So everywhere we see b0, we're going to plug in y bar minus the slope times the x bar. And then we're going to bring that down here. 
And so this is what you end up with. We can immediately uh, cancel the 2 by dividing both sides by 2. Then we're just going to collect terms. And here I'm collecting the yi and y bar times xi into this term. And then I'm going to work on this side, and I'm going to collect the slopes. Um, and, and similarly, um, collect the slope times xi minus x bar times xi. So you get the slope and the xi. So this is what we end up with right here. Now, in order to go further in getting towards the formula that we saw for finding the slope that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals, you need to realize, this is not obvious, but realize that this term, sum of the yi minus y bar times xi, is the same as the sum of the yi minus y bar times xi minus x bar. Why? Well, here's a little demonstration of this. Multiply this out using the FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. So you get yi times xi, yi x bar, you get y bar x bar, and you get y bar xi. This is it written all out. These two terms in the middle will cancel, and why that is is also not obvious until you think about it. Ignore the x bar for a second. That's just the average of the x. That's just a number. We can forget that for just a second. But ask yourself, what happens if I take all the yi's and add them up? All the data. First, here's some numbers. 5, 10, and 15. Add them up. You get 30. What would happen if I added up the average of those numbers three times, since there are three numbers? Well, the average of 5, 10, and 30 sorry, 5, 10, and 15, I probably misspoke there, the average of 5, 10, and 15 is 10, we'll add up 10 three times, you get 30. So adding the, the numbers 5, 10, and 15 gives you 30, adding up the average three times gives you 30. And so hopefully that'll convince you that those two terms are the same, one's negative, one's positive, they cancel. And so what you're left with is that this right hand side is the same as just yi minus y bar times xi. It, it looks and seems really different when you first think about it. How is xi the same as xi minus x bar? But you just have to trust me if you don't if you don't believe me so far. Now we also do a similar kind of substitution with xi minus x bar times xi that is the same as the sum of xi minus x bar times xi minus x bar or just xi minus x bar squared and making those substitutions you can easily see that when we solve for b hat, beta hat 1 the estimated slope we get the formula that we saw before for the uh, slope for a simple regression coefficient now, in the remaining minute I have left, I, let me just mention that there are a few other ways to derive this formula, and also a few other ways that you'll see this slope formula written. A common way to see this slope formula written is to recognize what these things look like. Now, we've already discussed how this, the sum of the xi minus x bar looks like the variance of the x, except we're not dividing by n minus 1. But this top of the formula looks just like how you calculate the covariance between y and x, except you're not dividing by n minus 1. So sometimes you'll see the slope formula written as the covariance between y and x divided by the variance of the x's, because those n minus 1's will cancel, and you'll be left with the slope. And there are a few other ways that you'll see this formula written but that's probably the most common one that puts it in terms that you've probably seen in a statistics class before. So that gives us our formula again, the slope yi minus y bar, xi minus x bar, some of those, divided by the xi minus x bars squared 
and the sum of those. And again, yi minus the slope times, or sorry, the y bar minus the slope times x bar in order to get the y-intercept.